John, I think the last time we spoke to you was in the early hours of the morning in the dying days of Copenhagen. Have things moved forward or backwards since then? Thank goodness they've moved forward. It was disastrous. Everybody was looking for the blame game there. Quite wrong in my view and leaders thinking somehow they could settle it in three or four days. I tried to tell them there's not a chance. But what I learned from Copenhagen is you're not going to get a legal agreement because the developing countries are not going to accept it. America can't deliver one either, whatever it says about it. The second thing is we're not going to complete negotiations by 2012. It is essential to keep the principles we decided at Kyoto in 1997 on to the second period. Now America is a lead in the attack, I believe Canada is with it as well. These rich countries saying we don't want Kyoto, you never signed up for the damn thing anyway. And what we've got to say is don't let the Kyoto one wither on the vine. That is, oh, it's finished, we don't have to observe it now. No, so I hope we're going to see now here a period of time based on Cancun of how we look in reflection, how we continue the negotiations, and probably by 2015 have to make a decision then about the legal framework. Of course, a number of countries have already come out and said they're not going to join a second commitment period of the Kyoto Protocol. What's the value in an international... Well, you know what those countries are, because I hear the... Well, let me just think, the Americans go around touting various names, and when you hear those countries, they're not necessarily saying it. They even quote in Russia as the same one. I don't know whether Russia's still it. Japan yesterday, at a parliamentary meeting, said it wasn't going to do, and got hammered by all the Africans who saying, how can you, as a rich country, not prepare to help us go through the growth to reduce our unemployment and prosperity? So that's quite a moral issue. And when Mr. Stern, who's the American negotiator, goes around saying, well, it's just a mathematical one because China emits as much as we do, yes, but do it per capita and you find it's 20 tonnes per person in wealthy America. What annoys me, they are rich countries carry uh, America and Canada, if I would take those two. They help poison the world and they're not prepared to make some effort to bring in and continue Kyoto. The Canadian government's one of those who's come out and said they won't sign up. Do you, what's the value of an international agreement if it's supposed to be legally binding if countries can just withdraw this? The Americans told us at Kyoto they won't sign up. So I said, well, beg it off if you're not signing up because you're not going to veto it. So the Russians came on board and we got it, right? Now the Canadians, originally, there's a change in government here, actually supported a 7% cut in the, and they took the targets at Kyoto. This new government came under Mr. Howard in 2006 and made it clear to me when I visited him, they were not intending in any way to support uh, Kyoto. And therefore now they've confirmed it. And why are they doing that? They're doing it because what they call tar sands. Not only did they poison the world in the past like America, they now want to get an energy form most polluting kind and not even prepared to help to deal with the damage from that pollution to the rest of the world. This is obviously a huge moral failure. Is it a failure of political leadership on the behalf of the leaders of Canada, America, those countries? Well, it's certainly a moral issue. I mean, if the rich part of the world, you know, the top 10 richest people in the, in the world countries, they have control of something like 60% of the wealth. And if they're the ones that are not prepared to argue that there must be a change, the essential principle to govern Kyoto negotiations is common but differential responsibilities. So the countries that want to grow and reduce unemployment and take people out of the $2 a day that they're in, they need to grow and we need to growth on less carbon and they might issue more carbon. What they're saying, washing their hands on it, we don't want anything to do with it. That is immoral. That is wrong. It's a disgrace and I wouldn't like to belong to a nation that believes that. There were high hopes for the US when Obama came in. What's gone wrong? Oh, you better ask Obama about that. All I can tell you is that Bush told us he wasn't going to sign up. He didn't believe in the science. Obama said he believes in the science but apparently he can't do anything about it. Now, I hope America, there's a, a, something in the air that they might come along with it. But there's an election in the air in America, they're not going to come along. And he kept telling, uh, the Americans kept telling me, we can't afford to have our gas prices go up to those levels predicted, 1997. They're about four times higher than they were predicted. And they're having to live with that. That is one of the consequences, as the cost of energy, the delivery on oil and coal, will be a tremendous increase in world energy prices. Finally, you've been in these negotiations. What's going to be happening this week? What's the atmosphere going to be like? And how are things going to well, move I'm forward? Shouting on the outside, right? I am meeting a lot of players since the uh, since my time at Kyoto, and uh, I've given you my assessment. Of I think what's going to happen. I think we're going to 
uh, come to some understanding that the values of Kyoto are not to fall on 2012. We'll have a carryover period on some of the principles that were agreed on a voluntary system at Cancun. But there will have to be a timetable. There will be a framework which is legal. That's the most difficult one. And I think we are to reassess that by 2015. But you can no longer send by 2015 the negotiations have not yet been completed.